Hi everyone, I'm Joe Wilcox, the Technical Director here at the WISE Engineering Digital Reality Lab, and today I'm here to talk about our best-selling VR hand pack. There have been a lot of requests on how to use our pack with the default VR starter kit, so today I'm going to give you a quick tutorial on how to do just that. But before we begin, let's talk a little bit about the differences between our hands and the default ones in the engine. While our pack is patterned after the default hands, we didn't use the default VR hand skeleton. We've done over 15 VR projects here at the DRL, and over time we decided that the default skeleton needed some tweaks to get a good realistic hand animation. So while much of the hierarchy and joints are the same, we had to make some adaptions. What this means in the real world is you can't use the default anim blueprints right out of the box, and you'll need to retarget other third-party poses to our hands, but we feel the changes we made to the joints are worth it in the long run. Another difference is while both the default pose and our poses share the same orientation, the default VR uh, project applies a rotation to the hand to make them feel more natural, going from palm down to palm inward. Our pack doesn't do this. We maintain palm down consistency and make any adjustments to the poses themselves. This makes creating poses and animations easier in the long run, especially if you want fine interaction with world objects. But don't worry. It's really easy to quickly adapt the VR Starter Kit to our content. But before we begin, please like and subscribe our video and our channel so you can get the latest updates. And we are working on the first pose pack to go along with this kit, so if you have suggestions about what poses we should include, please leave them in the comments or in our forum thread, which I'll link below. All right, so let's jump right into this. There are three steps that we need to take in order to adjust the uh, default VR template to use the wise hand meshes. The first is to change the anim blueprint. We talked about that earlier. And the second is to remove the rotation from the hand mesh, which we also talked about earlier. The third step is we're gonna have to adjust the negative scaling for the left hand, and you'll see why in a few minutes. But before we get into how do we do all that, it's probably a good idea to understand how the current system works. So what happens is the motion controller, if you look at the motion controller here, in the tick, every frame, it's going to set the animation state on the hand mesh by grabbing the anim instance, casting it to the right hand anim blueprint, and then setting the grip state. So if we actually go look at that anim instance, jump into it here, you can see that it takes grip, applies it to a blend space, and that gives you your pose. And grip is just simply a calculated float where it looks at the various grips, uh, grip states and then determines where in the blend space it should be. Now, that's a good way to do it. I'm not going to use a blend space. I'm going to use estates because eventually uh, states allow for much better control over the animations that go on. And if you extend from your project, you're going to want to be using anim states. So let me get back out of here. All right, so let's build our anim instance. So we're gonna select our blueprint folder. I'm gonna come over here and say animations, anim blueprint. You're gonna select anim instance. And then since this is our right hand, we're gonna select our right hand skeleton. And we're gonna create our new anim instance and we'll call it ABP uh, starter wise. We're gonna open up our anim instance. And if you remember from the original uh, starter kit, there's a blend space in here. It takes the value of the blend space and puts it to the output node. For those of you who haven't really seen the screen before, um, this is the pose that's going to be displayed. If we take, say, uh, come at me, and we throw it out here and we hook it up, you know, and compile it, you're gonna see it's playing the come at me animation. We're not gonna use that, obviously. Uh, we're not gonna use a blend space, we're gonna use states. I like states because as you get to more complex animations, you're going to want the flexibility that the state engine gives you. So you're going to drag this out, type states, and add a new state machine. Once we have the new state machine, we're going to jump into here. And if you remember how it works, the pawn takes the grip state and sends it over to the anim instance. And it sends it, it's a grip enum. And if you look at the grip enum, there's three different values. There's open, can, grab, and grab. So we're gonna to wanna to create a state for each one of these enum entries. So we're gonna drag out, I'm gonna say add a state, and we're gonna call this one open. And then we're gonna drag out, and we're gonna add a state. I'm gonna call this can grab. And then we're gonna drag out and add a state, and we're gonna call this uh, grab. So that covers the three states of the various enums. And now we need to set up 
how they determine. Oh, before we do that, let's go ahead and add the animations to it. So for the open state, we're just going to play our idle. For the can grab, I'm just going to play idle B, which is a tighter idle. Um, there are other animations in there that we could put in here. And this should be very uh, project specific. In a lot of our projects, we have helpers that as you're going to pick up an object, it will tell the animation system that I want to be playing this particular can grab animation so that it matches what it's trying to pick up. But that's entirely up to you how you want to handle that. And then for the grab, we're just going to use holding sword for right now. Um, holding sword is a good generic uh, holding animation. So we have our animation set up. And now we need to set our transitions. I'm also going to set up a transition that goes like this. So we want to go from open to can grab, from can grab to grab. We also want to be able to go from open to grab. In fact, we want to be able to go all the steps as well. So you need to be able to go from any node to any other node. And the way you determine how you go from one state to the other state is these little decision knobs. So for example, this one, this is gonna be the decision to go from can grab to open. This is the decision that allows you to go from open to can grab. So let's start there. So we're gonna select this and we're, oh wait, we don't have any way to do this. You're right. Remember, we go back to the original way they did this. There was the grip um, enum and the grip state variable. So we're gonna create a grip state variable, call it grip state, and we're gonna make it a grip enum. So now we have a way for the pawn to tell us what animation state we want to be in. We're going to grab that, get the grip state, see if it equals, and if it equals can grab, we're going to allow it to enter this transition. So what that says is when we're here, right, because we set this node, if the grip state equals can grab, transition to this state. Likewise, we're going to set the to go back if the grip state, we'll get it, equals open, go back to the open state. We're going to do that for all these connections. So here is can grab to grab. So if your grip state equals grab, we want to enter this transition. And then the same thing to go back. If your grip state, oops, if your grip state equals can grab, go back to can grab. Now we're gonna add one more in here, one more set, and that allows you to go directly from open to grab and directly from grab back to open. So again, we bring up the decision, grip state equals grab, start your transition, that's that one, and then the final one, Grip state equals open, start your transition. So now we have all of our tr transitions set up. If you're open, if you're can grab, if you're grab. So now we're gonna compile that, make sure we're all good and we're good. Okay, so we have our anim state now. How do we check to see if it's working? Well, we're gonna grab the grip state down here and we're just gonna switch it. And you should see the animation change as we change our grip state. And yep, everything's working. So come on once again, save it. We're all good on the anim state. How do we hook it up? We're gonna bring up the BP motion controller and we're gonna switch out the hand first. So we're gonna to go to the hand mesh. We're gonna select, it's currently this one. So we're going to come down to the YZR hand pack bring up the meshes and let's just use the Kung Fu gloves since we've already been using it. Now you notice when I switch over the mesh, it blanked out the Adam blueprint. If we look back at there and we've got the mesh. So now we've got to go back to our Adam blueprint and hook that up. So go back to blueprints, select the Adam blueprint and assign that. Now we have to tell the blueprint um, to set the value on the Adam blueprint. And remember, when we looked at how this all works, we go to the event graph 
And here in the tick, where is the tick? Here in the tick, comes through and it updates the anim state of the hand mesh. So what we have to do is we have to change this so that instead of sending it on the old anim blueprint, we're doing the new one. So we're just going to get rid of that node right there, get rid of that node. So we're still gonna take the hand mesh and we're gonna get the anim instance, cause that's all set. And then we're gonna cast this anim instance, but this time we're gonna cast it to uh, the AB starter wise, ABS starter wise. Let's take that, come back up here to this pin and hook it back up. And if we get that cast, we're gonna call set grip. Because remember, we put the grip state variable in there. So it's gonna call a set grip and set the grip to that. So we'll compile and ignore this warning down here. That always happens and we're good. Okay, so we've finished step one. We replaced the anim blueprint. Step two is adjusting the rotation on the hand mesh. So we'll go back up to the viewport here and we'll select the hand mesh. And as you can see, the default comes with a 90 degree rotation in. So we're just gonna take that out. And that'll bring us back to palm down, which is how we base all of our animations on. Remember, unlike the default starter kit, our animations are all gonna be designed to be start from palm down so that if you wanted to be, you know, in that sort of hand vertical animation, we actually do that in the animation. So the third step is we have to fix up the left hand. So the way the starter kit does your left hand is it takes the right hand and applies a negative scale to it to basically flip it and make it look like it's the left hand. But because we've adjusted the rotation, we have to adjust how that works. So we're gonna go back here to the event graph and this happens up in the begin play area. Here we go. So inverts the scale on the created left hand. What we need to do is because we've rotated it, we need to take it off the Z and add it to the Y because that's where you're gonna want the scaling factor now. And now we should be all set. We can compile and save and we're ready to give it a test. Testing, of course, is super easy. We're just going to go up here and hit play. And if all goes well, we should be able to look at our hands. Oh, look, they're pretty. Pull the triggers. Yep. We're moving. Let's teleport over to the blocks here. A little bit closer. So, open. Can grab. Grab. And it works just like you would expect it to. There you have it. That's how you use uh, the WISE VR hand pack with the starter kit. Hopefully this answers all your questions. If you have any, you can either leave them in our forum post, which is uh, linked below, or feel free to leave them right here. And remember, please subscribe. Uh, we'll have more videos coming out, more tutorials, and uh, that's it. Hopefully this helped. Thanks and have a good day.